you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Anybody can do it. Get off your couch, go to this school, sign up today. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our channel. I am JC, if you are new here, from Just Lost. JC here. Oh, whatever. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome back. So, I am making another Alibaba.com video, okay? I am very excited to share this one because this one is gonna be, there are gonna be some pro tips in this. This is a video dedicated all to pro tips. So, I'm doing this because I've already made three previous videos about Alibaba.com for beginners and those videos, if you're interested, definitely go check them out. They're about how to start an online business in 2021. So you can check that one out, that's the first one. And then I go into how to find a supplier and how to get samples, negotiation, questions that you should ask, all laid out in that video. And then for the third video, I helped better navigate the site to figure out which suppliers would be more valid to go with versus others so you don't get scammed. So this one is going to be more some pro tips, pro tips that didn't really fit into any of the other videos because they weren't uh, as specific to the topic, but they are things that I made notes of because I did want to speak on and I did think it was important for you to know. You can, of course, get by with everything in the previous three videos. This is just the pro tip if you have some time, if you have some time to kill, okay? So definitely get out a pen and paper, take some mental notes, save this video for when you are ready, because whenever you're ready, these videos will still be here. Got my computer, so let's get started. So the first thing that I wanted to highlight for you all is that on Alibaba.com, you can search products versus suppliers. So this is something that I didn't really realize. It's not something that you need to know in order to have a successful first Alibaba encounter. I didn't know this when I first started and I uh, contacted sellers and got samples and all that before I even figured this out. So this is something that I have learned and I thought that you guys could know or should know. When you go to Alibaba.com, there is a drop down tab that allows you to choose between products versus suppliers. Now, what this means is that when you are searching for products specifically, you might be getting listings from the same suppliers. So what happens on these sites is that they post multiple listings with different um, um, cover photos just to see which ones will snag people's attention, but it might still be the same supplier. The thing is though, not only do they have different product photos or cover photos, they might even change the price slightly. So you're getting, and so whichever one you hit is the one that you think is the only listing for that seller, but that seller might have other listings with better options. And if you know the other listings that they have with the lower options, then it gives you a better place to start with negotiating. Because if you just see the, the product listed there that has the highest price and you might think that's it, when there might be some room to negotiate. So that I think is very important. So if you are looking for something specific, you can still search, I'm looking for 120 ml bottles, but you can search that in suppliers. And when you search it in suppliers, slow suppliers, you'll just get the one listing from each supplier selling that thing. And so it'll be easier to navigate and easier to reach out and make sure that you're not reaching out to the same person that's just had multiple postings of the same thing. That is a pro tip. That is something that was super helpful and has been super helpful for me once I learned that. So I figured I would share that with you lot, yeah? Another pro tip that again, it's not necessary to have a successful Alibaba.com experience, but it's something that you should consider and take into account now that you know it. But a lot of the sellers are, as I said, different countries, countries all over the world. And of course that means different time zones. You're in different countries. You all might be ordering for your stores or drop shipping in different countries all over the world. So time zones are huge. So one thing that I do now is I like to ask what time zone that they're in or what times work better for them in their time zone so that I can adjust my schedule to make it work for them. Because here's the thing, they have a lot of people reaching out to them all hours of the day. And when you feel like you're not getting a response quickly, 
it might be because the time zones are really the issue. So you just want to make sure that you're being as respectful as possible to them. And also you want to make sure that you're reaching out at a time that if this is a question that you really need an answer to ASAP, you're reaching out to each person and maximizing your day to know that you're reaching out to each supplier in whatever time zone they are in at the right time so that you're able to get the answer and make your decisions quicker. For me, communication at first took so long because I didn't realize, oh, they're in a different time zone. So I would send things um, during the day when I'm getting the bulk of my work done for YouTube or my other things that I have going on. I'm like, okay, this is the time that I lot to do this. But if they're not operating at that, at that time, then I can't really complete, that I can't put an end to that question or that um, part of my day until the next day when they've answered and so I could see the answer. So it was just a lot, a lot of time wasted that I feel like could have been maximized had I asked. Now, like I said, I do ask what is the time zone that you're in? What's the best time to contact you? Do you work on weekends? Do, um, what holidays? Because there's a lot of holidays in other countries that we might not observe here, but they do. And so it might hinder communication and you might think this isn't a person that I want to have a good long term relationship, business relationship with because they're not very effective communicators. When in fact they may be, it's just that you guys are not, you listen. It's not that you're not on the same page, it's just that you're in different books, honey, okay? So you can get to the same book and figure it out together. And the last tip that I'm going to give, and I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I do want to press into it is to diversify to have contacted more than one seller for or supplier rather for whatever it is that you are looking for now I don't think I stressed the importance of this really before, but again, a lot of these companies are selling many things. A lot of these factories make many things. Now, if something that they're making isn't that profitable for them, if you are literally the only person that's looking for this thing, guess what? They may decide that it doesn't, it's not advantageous for them to continue to produce this thing. So after a year, months, they might be like, ah, okay, we're no longer doing that. And you come trying to place your order and they say, hey, we no longer supply this product anymore. We took it off of our Rolodex. We took it off of our catalog. It's just not advantageous for us to continue to provide this. Now, what are you doing? You have, let's say you have a drop shipping site. You have all these people ordering from your other sites, from your Shopify, from whatever businesses that you have at this, this Alibaba.com um, products that you're selling linked to, and they're still ordering, but you just have no supplier to fulfill it. So have a list, develop relationships, get supplies, get samples from multiple different vendors so that you know the quality of each. And that if one, for some odd reason, is no longer giving you the product that you need, you have someone else that you can go to easily. Now, the, the people that you're going to might not have been your first choice, whether it's because of price, whether it's because the quality was a bit different or a bit less than you would have liked, but at least it's something and you don't have to shut down or halt or have um, a hold on your business because you literally have no other backup plan. So that is what I would suggest. I think that's very important because on a site like this, Sellers pop up, sellers disappear, sellers come in, you might have great relationships, but they no longer supply the thing that you're using anymore. And so now you're left out in the cold trying to figure it all out. That to me is very important. Um, I didn't stress the importance too much the first time because I didn't really realize the importance. But now that I'm looking at, into it, I'm like, listen. Okay, a word is enough for the wise, as my mom says. Again. I think the more information you know, the better. And the more resources that you have, the better. So let this just be another resource in all the resources, all the things that you're doing prepping for your online business. But again, you're never gonna know anything. Uh, Father? <laughs> no. <laughs> Yo, that's not what I meant. I mean, you're never going to know everything. And like I said in this video, I'm very open and transparent. I didn't know half of these things when I made my first order. So don't let the fear of not knowing everything and doing everything perfect halt you or hinder you from even starting. If you have a vision for something, just go for it. Everything else you'll figure out in time. Everything else will fall into place. That's what I believe. That's my model. If you have a passion for it, do it. Everything else will drop into place accordingly. Not everything you need to know in the beginnings. In fact, if some things that when you do know in the beginning, if feels very overwhelming which is why I was trying to make these the videos in different parts because I'm not trying to overwhelm everything which is also why I ex like to explain when I'm doing these videos because I don't want everyone to feel overwhelmed or like it's something that they cannot do you can do it if I can do it you can do it. I'm gonna go but hopefully this has been helpful for you all 
If it is, let me know. If it's something that you found useful, I'm so happy. Okay, I'm so happy because I didn't really want to share. So, again, thank you all so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah, and I'm going to see you in my next one. Bye. All right. Cheerio. <laughs>